Let's begin by talking about innate versus adaptive immunity, the two arms of the immune system. A lot of times you can answer questions just by realizing what kind of response we're looking at. Is this an innate response or an adaptive response? Remember that with innate response, the receptors that recognize pathogen are germline encoded. They don't change. The response to the pathogens is fast and nonspecific. The innate system has no memory and consists of neutrophils, macrophages, dendritic cells, natural killer cells, which are lymphocytes, remember that, and complement. So with the innate overall, think fast, immediate, no memory. For the adaptive response, the receptors that recognize pathogens undergo hypervariability, right? VDJ recombination during lymphocyte development. So you have very specific receptors on the cells of the adaptive immune response. The response is slow on first exposure because we have to go through these proliferation steps. But the memory response is much faster and more robust. The adaptive response consists of T cells, B cells, and circulating antibody. And so with the adaptive immune response, remember slow at first, slow with the primary response, much faster with the secondary response, specific to a certain antigen. Now let's talk about MHC class one and class two. Remember that MHC stands for major histocompatibility complex. It's encoded by a group of genes called the human leukocyte antigen genes, or HLA genes. The boards will often use these interchangeably. So you can see MHC or HLA, they refer to the same thing as far as humans are concerned. The job of the MHCs are to present antigen fragments to T cells and bind to the TCR. These MHCs look for protein fragments that can be either endogenous or made within the cell, or exogenous, made outside of the cell, and then present them to the T cells through a T cell receptor MHC interaction. There's two classes that you need to know. Class 1 is HLA-A, HLA-B, and HLA-C, so there's three types of class 1. It's expressed on almost all nucleated cells and not expressed on red blood cells. Remember, mature red blood cells have no nucleus. The antigen that's loaded into MHC class 1 is an endogenous antigen. It's made inside the cell and loaded in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Because it looks at proteins that are found inside the cell, we think about MHC class 1 as mediating viral immunity because viruses make their proteins inside the cell. The MHC class 1 chain will pair with another peptide called beta-2 microglobulin, which aids in transport to the cell surface and also aids in MHC class 1 stability. Once it's at the surface, it then binds to the CDR and also to the co-receptor CD8 on the surface of the T cell. So MHC1 binds to the TCR and to CD8. MHC class 2 also has three subtypes, HLA-DR, HLA-DP, and HLA-DQ. These are expressed only on antigen presenting cells, or APCs. The antigen that's loaded onto the MHC class 2 is following the release of invariant chain in an acidified endosome, meaning that the MHC class 2 travels from the rough ER to an endosome that has antigen from the outside, antigen that's brought in from the outside. It's then loaded by releasing the invariant chain that's in the binding side of the MHC class 2 and loading it with a peptide chain. It will then migrate to the surface and present to CD4 T cells through an MHC TCR interaction. Remember that MHC class 2 then binds to the TCR and binds to the CD4 co receptor. It's important to remember that MHC class 1 and MHC class 2 are inherited as a haplotype. They don't rearrange their genes like the T cell receptors or the B cell receptors do. And the pattern that you're born with is the pattern that you have throughout your life. Now, this pattern that you have can make you susceptible to certain diseases because of the peptide binding nature that they have. Some examples of these that they like to use in the boards are the following. HLA-A3 has been associated with increased susceptibility to hemochromatosis. B27 is associated with several diseases, psoriasis, ankylosing spondylitis, inflammatory bowel disease, and Reiter's syndrome. You can remember this with the mnemonic PAIR, P-A-I-R, psoriasis, ankylosing spondylitis, 
inflammatory bowel disease, and Rider syndrome. HLA-B8, another class 1 MHC, is associated with Graves' disease. DR2 is a class 2 MHC that's associated with several diseases, including multiple sclerosis, hay fever, SLE or lupus, and good pasture syndrome. DR3 is associated with diabetes mellitus type 1. DR4 is associated with rheumatoid arthritis and diabetes mellitus type 1. DR5 is associated with pernicious anemia. Remember, this is a B12 deficiency. It's also associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And DR7 has been associated with steroid responsive nephrotic syndrome. Another lymphocyte of the immune response is the natural killer cell. Remember, this is lymphoid lineage. This does not come through the monocyte myelocyte lineage. It comes through the same lineage as the BNT cells, but it's not part of the adaptive immune response. It's part of the innate immune response. It uses perforin and granzymes to induce apoptosis of virally infected cells as well as tumor cells. Again, it's the only lymphocyte member of the innate immune system. Its activity is enhanced by certain cytokines like IL-12, interferon beta, and interferon alpha. These natural killer cells can be induced to kill a cell when exposed to a nonspecific activation signal on the target cell or to an absence of class 1 MHC on a target cell surface. In other words, natural killer cells are looking for two different types of signaling, one that can activate killing or the absence of one that inhibits killing, and that's mediated through MHC class 1 on a target cell surface. Let's talk about our other lymphocytes, B cells and T cells. The B cell functions mainly to make antibodies. Remember that antibodies in and of themselves aren't toxic, but they can do certain things to help with the immune response. They can opsonize bacteria or make them more attractive to macrophages for phagocytosis. They can neutralize viruses, especially the IgG subclass of antibodies. They can activate complement. IgM and IgG are the two antibodies that like to do this. IgM being better at it than IgG, and they can also sensitize mast cells, specifically the IgE isotype of antibody. B cells can also mediate allergies, especially type 1 hypersensitivity through IgE. They can mediate cytotoxic and immune complex hypersensitivities, or type 2 and type 3, and that's mainly through IgG. They can also mediate hyperacute organ rejection, and that is mediated by preformed antibodies within the recipient of the transplanted organ. T cell functions include CD4 T cells, which help the B cells make antibodies, as well as help the macrophages to become activated. They do this through the release of cytokines. So CD4 T cells or helper T cells are involved in cytokine production. CD8 T cells or cytotoxic T cells kill virally infected cells through a direct mechanism. T cells are also involved in hypersensitivity specifically delayed type hypersensitivity, or type 4. T cells are also involved in transplant rejection, but they are not involved in hyperacute rejection. They are mainly involved in acute and chronic organ rejection. 